All right, okay, all right. So what, okay, we're going to go start reading from Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, but, but before we do, let's pray, okay? Heavenly Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to give you thanks. Father, we just want to thank you for the time together we have this morning, together in your name to give you glory and praise. Father, I just need your grace and I need your mercy. And Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. So I pray, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to speak through me and touch the hearts of the people that are here this morning and the people who are watching. Lord, I just pray that everybody in here will be um, edified and encouraged. Lord, not condemned. Lord, but just to be edified and encouraged. Lord, just to seek you, to rest in your grace, and to rest in your truth to rest in your presence so we give you the praise we give you all the glory lord because we are here because of you in jesus name amen amen first of all big shout out to all the mums out there happy mother's day here in australia 12th it is the 12th today isn't it the 12th of may 2024 it is mother's day oh i got to talk to my mum this morning and then a melon that was good that was good. Now, let's start from, okay, we're going to, our Galatians chapter 6, but what we're going to do, um, we're going to start from verse 7, but we're going to keep reading on for a little bit, okay? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. This morning's message is what seeds are you sowing and what harvest are you reaping? I didn't want to go to the, the talk about the parable of the sower, okay, because we know with the parable of the sower, he talks about in its context about the sowing of the word. But what I want to talk to about what seeds are you sowing in your life and what harvest are you reaping? Okay, and this is something I think we, as as a, as a church, as as an individuals, we kind of neglect and forget that everything that we do, everything word that we speak, every action that we do towards other people, is seed sowing into someone else's life and in your own life, and you end up reaping our harvest. <coughs> Are you sowing bitterness, anger? Unforgiveness, hatred, they're all seeds. And if you keep dwelling on that and you keep sowing that in your life, you're going to start reaping the rewards of that. You're going to start reaping that harvest. It's a principle in God. When you sow something in, 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 in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual matters, you'll reap. And you can't turn around and get, start getting angry at God and start waving your fist and start going, why are you doing this? You've got to start taking around and start looking at yourself and start thinking, what am I doing in my own life that's causing these things to happen? See, so you've you got to understand something. When you're sowing into your own life or into the lives of others, God's going to let you reap the harvest of whatever it may be. Mm. All right? Are we sowing seeds of mercy? Are we sowing seeds of grace? Are we sowing seeds of hope? Are we sowing seeds of love? Are we sowing seeds of helping the poor? Are we sowing seeds to help those who are in need? Are we doing that? Are we, you know, is that something that we're doing in our lives? Because it really benefits us when we do those things. We reap a harvest in it. We don't only have to expect anything in return, but the Lord so faithfully promises that he will send the harvest our way.
I, it reminds me, it reminds me of a, in Matthew chapter 18, and, and I've spoken about this before in the past, about the parable of the unforgiving servant. And we look in that parable where, you know, this guy was um, owed the king massive, massive amounts of money, hundreds of million dollars, probably even billions in today's currency. And he said, please forgive me. I'll pay you back. Okay, this is my paraphrase, okay? <coughs> and what God's doing, he's, and the, the king had mercy on him, forgave him of all his debt, completely wiped the debt clean. And then when he found someone who owed him something measly like 10 bucks, again, my paraphrase, and he's trying to establish the great distance of money that was owed, he took that person who owed him money, put his hands around the neck and said, pay me what you owe now, when the king found out about this, he said, shouldn't you have had mercy? Shouldn't you have grace? I forgave you. Why didn't you forgive him? And what harvest did he reap? He was thrown into prison, him and his whole family, until the debt was paid. And that means he was in prison for the rest of their lives because there was no way they could have paid them back that money. There is a principle in the Lord that I've seen so much in my life of reaping, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. And sometimes we don't even realize we're sowing seeds that's going to reap a harvest of good consequences or bad. Mm. We have to be careful of the seeds that we sow. It just, it just amazes me that, you know, in my life, you know, I've looked back on my life and I'm going, God, why have you allowed this to happen? Why is this happening in my life? Why is that happening in my life? And then I need a little gentle reminder. It's because of the things that I've sown into and I've reaped the consequences of it. But thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy that I can turn around and change and ask for not only just fast forgiveness and be totally cleansed from all unrighteousness. Thank God for that. I can actually start sowing the right seed into my life. Being a blessing to other people, encouraging people, helping those who are in need. Not not stop thinking about myself all the time, but thinking about others and putting their needs before mine. I know when I start doing stuff like that and when I start focusing on things like that, I'm starting to reap a harvest of it right now in my life. And I'm so grateful. You know, and, and people are saying, well, are you? You know, you're in, you're in hospital being treated for cancer. And you know what? I wouldn't change that for the world. Amen. Yeah, amen. I wouldn't change what I'm going through for the world for anyone. It's because God allows, you know, some people struggle with this, but I don't because I see it so clearly in the Word. The Apostle Paul says we rejoice in our families. Possibly, you know, the Apostle Paul knew to be when he was abased and when he abounded. Mm. James says, count it all joy when you face various trials yeah. and tribulations. And one thing I've learned is that when I'm in that room, in that, in that bed, you know, and just you know, just lying there and just getting juiced up and, mm. you know, and just I'm reading the word, reading a really good Christian book or whatever, you know, I'm realizing that this is a time of season where I'm being refined. And I'm being brought closer to the Lord to a deeper level of grace that I've never experienced before. I'm telling you, I'm not going to change that for anyone. You know, I don't, yeah, it sucks coming home and you feel like you've been hit by a truck and you, you know, you just, you sleep, spend a lot of time in bed. But it's a good season. It's a good season of rest. The results are going really well, by the way, you know, and, um, you know, and things, I wouldn't change it. You know, it really reminds me of, it, it, it makes me want to really, really seek the Lord and just ask forgiveness of all the stupid things that I've sown into my life over the years. Mm. Now in this time and this season in our lives when things are coming to an end and we know things are coming to an end, we see it out there, now's not the time to be harboring unforgiveness. Mm. Now's not the time to be sowing bitterness. If there's things and issues in your life with other people, do the best you can to resolve it. 
do the do the best you know if the way you speak to your spouse the way you speak to your kids the way you speak to your friends and family members now's not the time now's the time to do the best you can to turn around and say try and live in peace among all men as the bible says in peter first peter sow those seeds and reap the harvest who benefits out of it you do i say that a lot it's like it's like you know who benefits out of this we do mm. do you want to be a person that's bound by bitterness and unforgiveness and reaping that okay or do you want to be do you want to reap the harvest of god's mercy and grace and love it's up to you it's not up to him he's given us the choice we can walk in the nature of the spirit or we can walk in the nature of the old man in the nature of the flesh we have a choice in that we don't we can make that decision and i'm telling you there's nothing worse than a christian who's constantly living in the flesh and reaping the consequences of the flesh there is nothing worse i look at the story of abraham you know and we we look at these guys in the bible i'm, I'm doing it i'm doing a, a like a, a study and a reading on jacob and i wanted to talk a lot about jacob this morning but i'm going to pull back a bit on that because i'm realizing the, the, the mistakes that this guy made <laughs> and and god keeps forgiving him and, and and giving him grace and grace and grace and he keeps going back and making mistakes and god keeps forgiving him and showing him visions and all this stuff and you know, and we, we, we look at these people like Abraham and Jacob and the Apostle Paul and we put them on a pedestal and say, oh, I just want to be like them. Well, can I tell you something? You are. <laughs> you you are. And they are like us. The Apostle Paul dealt with the same issues that we dealt with. He had issues in the ministry. He had falling outs with uh, Barnabas and Peter. You know, they, this, this, they're no different from us. We tend to idolize them we, we, so much. That we shouldn't do that because they knew humility they knew to be humility they knew to decrease so christ could increase and that is something that we should be striving for it's not a, it's not about us but we benefit from it it's just amazing how god works but you look at abraham all right god promised him that his descendants are going to be like numerous like the, sea, the, the grains of sand the stars in the sky but when, when things weren't happening, he was almost like 100 years old. And, you know, so Sarah goes, oh, okay, well, you know, why don't you go into Hagar and, and produce me a child? He took a shortcut. He took a shortcut. Jacob took shortcuts. When he deceived his dad, Isaac, when he, you know, for, 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 for the birthright, for the blessing. But it's interesting with Jacob's story, when when Isaac was in the tent and he was close to death, which I believe he actually lived for about another 35 years. I could be wrong on that, but I'm double checking that. But um, Jacob deceived him in a tent while his father was blind, ill health. When Jacob wanted to marry Rachel and he had to work for Rachel for seven years, Laban, his old man, Rachel's old man, deceived Jacob. And he was drunk in a tent, woke up the next morning and said, no, no, who are you? You're not the woman I'm, I'm married. <laughs> it's just like, he said, Jacob reaped what he sowed. See? You, you guys seen that on, on the, um, there's a video on you, like Facebook and Instagram and that, and it's a, it's a picture of a sheep in this trench, stuck in the trench with its leg, yeah. leg shaken out, and, and, and the guy pulls the sheep out. And the sheep said later jumps the van over over the trough and then goes straight back in it again. <laughs> That's us. We do the same thing. We do what we do, we do it all the time. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Every time God forgives me and saves my neck, right? I go back and do something stupid. And who doesn't do that? We do it all the time. But we have God's grace and God's mercy, but there's something you need to know in the principle of God. He's going to let you reap 
what you sow. How are we not going to learn? It doesn't mean you've lost your salvation. It doesn't mean, you know, God's going to cast you out. It's how we learn. You will always reap what you sow. The way you speak to people, the way you speak to your kids, the way you speak to your spouse, the way you speak to your, your family members, the way you speak to people, or you, the way you, you know, your work colleagues or whatever. You will always reap what you sow. If you're going to sow those seeds in those relationships, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about relationships right now, but it, it, it applies to everything. You're taking shortcuts at work. <laughs> you know, you're being dishonest with your taxes, being, you know, whatever. It's going to come back and bite you on the bum. It doesn't matter what, don't, don't think you're going to be exempt from it. You're not going to be exempt from reaping what you're sowing. But thank God, grace, 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 grace. When we come to him, he forgives and he gives that opportunity to sow the right seeds. He gives us the opportunity to start sowing. So get into the word. Find out what the word says about you and start declaring that over your life. Start declaring what the word says about you, okay, or what the word says about a particular situation or your relationship and start praying that over you. Your family, start praying it over your, your relationships. Start praying it over your work. When you're declaring what God says in the word, what he decrees in his word, you're decreeing his perfect will. His perfect will and not your own. That's right. yeah. There's a difference there. You know, you said that's what we do. That's what we need to do. That's sowing the right seed in every situation. And then we walk that out. And that's hard. Do you think it's easy? No, it's not, but we have his grace to enable us to do it. It's amazing how much grace God gives us and then we finally wake up to ourselves and think, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. It's not really working out for me. It's really hurting me. But we do it. We, we, we're sheep. We just keep jumping back and that. You know, we have a shepherd and we're sheep and we, are, you know, we tend to wander off and jump into into some sort of trench and, you know, and then we're waiting for him to pull us out by the legs and then we go back in there again. Church, we need to know what the word says. That's on you, not on us. We share the word. We do the best we can to share it with accuracy, but it's up to you to apply it into your own life, okay, and study it, research it in context and start walking in it. I just, I just look at the guys and the heroes of the faith like King David when he committed adultery with Bathsheba the first mistake David made was he shouldn't have been there he, they were meant to be out in battle so he shouldn't have been there on the top of the roof in the first place he should have been with the army leading the army so that was one first of all he saw a naked woman instead of turning away he was just gawking at her that's two then he commits adultery. Three. Then he goes. Then he tries. Then he gets. Um, uh, which is Uriah. You know, to come out from the front line uh, from battle. Tries to get him to sleep with Bathsheba to cover up his sin because they found out she was pregnant. That's four. And then and he and Uriah he was so faithful to his to his king. He said, "No, I can't do that. No way. I'm not going to do this." So he slept outside his door. So he's, David sends him to the front line, gets killed. So what are we up to? Five or six? I don't know. We're up there, right? So he commits murder. Baby dies. King David says, nevertheless, I'll praise the Lord. He, he interceded for the child to survive, but it didn't. And then he marries Bathsheba, and then she has a son. And who is that son? Solomon. And where's the lineage of Jesus comes down through? Solomon. That's grace. That's amazing. But it wasn't, but David wasn't without consequences. The sword was against his house, remember? He reaped what he sowed. He reaped it, and there was pain in his in his life. And God still called him a man after his own heart. That's right. So I'm just not going to drag it on, but I just want to say this. You actually have. Are you people after God's own heart this morning? Are you? Are, do you really want to be people 
has, has a heart after God. Listen, you're going to screw it up. You're going to mess it up. And you're going to reap that. Too bad, too sad. There's no way around it. But it doesn't mean God's grace is not there and he doesn't cleanse you and forgives you and can make that right. It's up to us to start sowing the right seeds into our lives to receiving a good harvest. A good harvest, not just into your own life, but into the lives of others. You can't deny the principle of God. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. We can say that in a negative sense, but you can say that in a positive sense. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, yeah, we, right. you know, we tend, we, 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 you know, we focus when we use the word consequences. We tend to use it on a negative sense, but we forget consequences. There's good consequences. There's a good harvest. There's a righteous harvest. And folks, I'm telling you right now, that's on you. Let's walk away from unforgiveness. Bitterness, division, strife, envy. Let's walk away from it while you've got the chance and while you've got the time. Ask God to forgive you, cleanse you, and turn around and start sowing seeds of love, mercy, grace, righteousness, even peace. You can so you can you can, I, I I don't like saying this, but you can financially as well. People misuse that, but you can. Yes. Right? When you're being a blessing to the poor, people who are in need, you can, God will bless you. And you, and you can, I've been a testimony of that so much. It's us. And in this time, in this season, we, people need to look at the church and see a church of people who love each other. And that's what Jesus says you'll know that you're my disciples by your love you have for one another. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. So let's do that. Change your kids' lives. Be a blessing to your spouse. Be a blessing to your friends. Stop cheating yourself at work. Start sowing those seeds. Because whatever seed you sow, that's the harvest you're going to reap. Okay? Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had this morning in your word. And Lord, I just pray that the people who just heard this would just um, be encouraged. Lord, we just thank you for your grace. We do thank you for your mercy. And Lord, there's times in our lives where we've sown seeds that brought us a, a, a bad harvest. A harvest of anger, a harvest of hatred, a harvest, a harvest of bitterness. But Father, I just pray right now with your grace that you'll just teach us by your Holy Spirit to sow seeds of love mercy and grace and not just little seeds but lots of them bucket loads of them father god because it brings you glory it brings you honor and lord you bless us you bless us father and we thank you for that so father as we continue on with our service this morning we just thank you and and we just give you all the glory in the name of jesus because without you we are nothing but lord in you we are everything. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.